Good morning, folks. The Real Captain Kirk here, live from Weather Trends 360 Studio here in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. It is the 24th of February. Hard to believe, but meteorological winter is over in less than one week. Looking at world temperatures here last week, uh, again, big map is versus a year ago, how our big retail clients like to look at the weather. Uh, the cool spot was actually the southeast, also one of the snowy spots with the uh, snow in Georgia and North Carolina, some light snow last week. Uh, much of the rest of the country, much, much warmer than last year. So even though it may not have been much above average, but it was just uh, exponentially warmer than a year ago this time. Uh, one reason for the winter, again, right now is trending second warmest in 35 years. Um, least snow in eight years, and uh, precip is down from a year ago, but uh, still fifth wettest in 35 years. But the, the warm, snowless trends are really responsible for this uh, extremely strong polar vortex. In fact, some cases... Uh, indicating a near-record strong polar vortex, keeping the cold bottled up at the North Pole in Alaska and parts of Northeast Siberia. So just have not allowed it to make perturbations down in the U.S. A couple. We've had a few this year, but um, um, just not had anything prolonged because of this really strong polar vortex. One big, huge pattern shift we do see here happening right now that uh, even though we had a weak El Nino, the weather in the U.S. certainly didn't act very weak El Nino-ish, to say the least. Uh, normally those can be kind of cold and snowy, and that certainly wasn't the case. We do think we're headed for a moderate to maybe even strong La Nina as we transition through the season here. Um, some of this is already factored into our year-ahead outlook for our big clients and uh, basically thinking that about 50% of the country is going to be in dry to drought-like conditions as we go through the, the summer-fall season. And then by next year, maybe uh, as much as 60% of the country in dry to drought-like conditions. So a pretty wholesale change from the really, really wet pattern we've had the last few years. The other factor of concern here with this uh, this Atlantic pattern and La Nina and some other cycles is that we believe there will be 20 named systems this year, hurricanes in the Atlantic, uh, and we're very concerned about New England and Florida. So, uh, whether this is a 2012 scenario, it's uh, something to watch, but uh, we do believe in extremely active, uh, high-threat landfalling areas, uh, again, northeast in Florida. Looking at this week, 24 February through 1 March, again, hard to believe, we're about to say March. 4.2 degrees warmer than last year, 6th warmest in 35 years, 16th warmest in 35 years. A little misleading here because the pattern is very fast, so we're going to go from warm to cold to warm to cold, so it's up and down. Uh, but this is kind of the weekly aggregate map inset left is temperature trends versus a year ago. So in the plains, northern part of the country, much, much warmer than a year ago. Dries in 6 years, below average nationally, 13th dries in 35 years, so on the dry side. And snowfall uh, at least 11% less than last year. The system going through the, the Midwest uh, looks to be much less significant than uh, it was suggesting this time last week. Looking at next week, the first full week of March, 2 through 8 March, again, 14.6 degrees warmer than a year ago. That's uh, pretty epic. Last year was the coldest in over 35 years. So a very, very cold start to spring last year. Uh, this year, polar opposite, 14.6 warmer, and again, sixth warmest in 35 years. So a dramatic shift from a year ago. Uh, what is in nine years? We'll see about this. Again, uh, this is potential for severe weather outbreaks when you get the, this much rain with uh, some cool weather clashing with really warm weather. Uh, so this will be interesting to see what happens here in terms of severe thunderstorms. Snowfall again on the NAMIC side, 25% less than last year nationally. Snow cover here this morning is second least in 17 years. Only 26% of us have snow on the ground versus last year at this time. It was uh, at 53%, way above average last year. And again, way below average this year. So polar opposite season here uh, so far this year. And again, we saw that all winter long. These are kind of the weekly highlights of winter. Um, the coldest week was actually the week before Christmas. 21 December was the coldest week nationally. The second coldest was around Martin Luther King, 20, 18 through 25 January. And then third coldest was right around Valentine's Day. Um, the snowiest uh, week in terms of snow increasing year over year was actually, again, that pre-Christmas week. So it was much snowier than the Christmas pre-Christmas week prior. In terms of just absolute straight-up snowfall, again, the snowiest weeks would be in mid-January there and early February. Uh, so, again, just some of the weekly highlights here for the U.S. overall. Looking at snowfall again so far this winter is, uh, again, eighth, uh, least in 35 years, least in eight years, and uh, 24% less than last year. That's our magic number. As you recall, some of our earlier discussions uh, back in the fall, we were saying that snowfall across the U.S. this winter would be 24% less than a year ago, and that's exactly where we are as of right now. So we'll see if we can hang on to this for one more week uh, of meteorological winter. But, uh, again, not a snowy winter to say the least, and anemic in Philadelphia. In fact, near, uh, near record low in Philly with only 0 0.3 inches. That's the second least in over 100 years for Philadelphia. Pretty interesting, though, if you look at Central Park, again, way below average, but just go, uh, you know, 100 or so miles inland and toward Binghamton, New York, and, uh, again, uh, almost uh, average. 
fact, the, uh, the New England areas and higher mountains of uh, New York and Maine have actually been above average with uh, over 97 inches up there in Car Caribou. So coastal cities in the Northeast have missed the snow this year. Um, best start to Q1 for our big retail clients, February through March. Again, already the, the best in several years. We quantify this power of one degree every one degree warmer in spring and what it means for retail sales. So if we look at that chart on the right here, those are bars or year-over-year -year temperature trends. And again, we see some big upward ticks. We've had a couple little cold snaps here, uh, again, around Valentine's Day and uh, earlier last week, and a warm-up here this weekend, and then uh, another big warm surge uh, potentially going into the early March time frame. Uh, so again, look at those 10, 15, 20 degree warmer weeks. That's a huge increase. Uh, apparel sales, for example, are up about 3% for every degree warmer. So again, uh, 30, 40, 50, 60% increases in apparel sales. That's again how we try to quantify both the weather and sales a year ahead by week everywhere on earth for our retail customers. The other thing that we're pretty confident about why we think uh, spring will at least be the warmest in several years, um, rivaling the 16, 17, 2012 time frame is just the uh, Great Lakes ice coverage. It's uh, non-existent. 9% of the lakes have ice uh, versus this time last year is 57%. What that means is sun won't have to spend its time uh, trying to melt all this ice on the lakes because there isn't any. Um, so if you go back and look at some of these years that didn't have a lot of ice coverage, uh, like back in um, 2017, again, it was pretty low in terms of ice coverage, and we're even lower than that today. Um, so that led to a very warm spring in 1617 when the lakes were below average. 2012 was a record warm spring, and again, below average. Um, 2012 was another very low ice coverage year, and again, a very warm spring, at least in the eastern half of the country. So again, this is a one bellwether of a very mild spring ahead. Um, so we don't think it's actually gonna be that cold and snowy. Um, little one was really excited to see Daddy's weather gauge say 56 degrees. So she says, outside Daddy, grab the kites. So we uh, grabbed the kites. Um, she quickly learned that mechanical turbulence around houses and trees do not make for great uh, kite flying. So we uh, headed to the park and uh, found some uh, higher mountain peaks here to fly our kites. Uh, we had Elsa and our airplane kite and her rainbow kite. So I will let you watch the little one here as she does her loop-de-loops. Uh, amazing that a four-year-old can um, do loop-de-loops, but uh, here you go. So with that, folks, have a great week, and we will be back here this time next week.